Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to have an introduction to concurrent containers. So one of the most useful things that we have in programming is abstractions. So for example, our data structures provide a very useful abstraction on top of our memory. Now, ideally, we'd like to be able to use things like data structures, so things like queues and lists and, and vectors, right? We'd ideally like to be able to use these things um, inside of, you know, parallel programs, right? So in our multi-threaded applications. Now, unfortunately, our built-in containers with the STL, so, you know, STL containers like stdq or stdvector are not well suited for this, right? At least if we're going to be doing any modification operations. So, you know, writes or you know, pushbacks or modifications to our containers. Now, fortunately, there are ways that we can protect our containers if we're going to be doing these modifications. But another thing that we can also consider is using dedicated concurrent containers. So containers that were kind of built from the ground up to support concurrent operations or operations from multiple threads. So what we're going to be doing in this, you know, initial example of concurrent containers is comparing, you know, a simple like stdq that's uh, guarded by just a normal mutex versus a dedicated concurrent queue coming from TBB. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And we'll open up our baseline first. So our example is going to be pretty simple. We just have a situation where we want to add, say, 2 to the 25 total elements into some queue here. And we're going to add those elements across eight different threads. So we're just going to evenly divide up our num elements across our num threads, right? And get those elements per thread. Now, the queue that we're going to be using in this example is just a normal std queue here of integers. Now, because this isn't, you know, built for, you know, with support for concurrent operations, we're going to protect our modification of this queue using a std mutex here. So, you know, here we have our work loop where we're going to be adding our elements to our std queue. So for elements per thread iteration, um, uh, iterations in this for loop, so each thread is going to run this, um, we'll first generate some random number here using this random number generator. So this will just be the kind of dummy item that we're going to add to the queue. Then we'll grab the lock, um, our mutex using this std lock guard, and then we'll go ahead and just push this value into our queue here, right? So at the very end, we should have a queue um, of size two to the 25 here. And then at the very bottom, we just spawn our threads here. Now, what we've done here is just to very simply protect our queue using something like a, a std mutex and a std lock guard here. But there could be better ways of handling this underneath the hood in supporting concurrency uh, more directly inside of something like the push operation itself. And that leads us to our concurrent containers. So here we have the exact same example right in this uh, tbb.cpp example. Uh, but the only real difference that we're going to make is that instead of using a lock to protect, um, you know, modification of our container, we're just going to directly use a, you know, concurrent container here. So we're going to use this TBB concurrent queue of integers here. And I have the TBB reference page for this concurrent queue class um, on the right hand side of the screen. And I'll, and I'll go ahead and link that uh, below the video as well. So here we can see that we have the exact same situation here um, where we're adding these two to the 25 elements into our queue from eight threads. Um, and now our for loop, um, we all we've really done here is gotten rid of our, um, our lock guard, right? We're still just pushing um, a random number that we've generated into our queue here. The only difference now is that we don't have to grab a lock in order to do this. Um, our concurrent queue supports concurrent operations. So multiple threads calling push at the same time. And here at the very bottom again, we'll just spawn our stdj threads in this vector here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just compare the performance of, of, of these two different implementations and see if it really is worth it uh, to take a deeper look at these concurrent containers. So here we'll go ahead and compile our baseline here. So we'll compile it with O3 optimizations, uh, our standard equal to C++ 20 because we're using jthread, and of course linking against libpthread or underlying thread implementation. So we'll go ahead and compile that and we can go ahead and compile this tbb example as well. Uh, the only real difference in flags here is that we'll also link against libtbb because we're using this concurrent queue. So we'll compile this as well, same optimization of you know, O3 and same standard of C++ 20. 
So let's go ahead and just compare the performance difference of doing all of these uh, push operations into this queue, but from different threads. So we'll go ahead and time first our baseline example here. So here, you know, what we end up seeing is that it takes a decent while, right? We have a whole bunch of threads all competing for the same lock, trying to push elements into this queue. So it takes somewhere on the order of 3.2 to 3.4 seconds generally. So we can run it a few times and you can see in this case, we're mostly getting around that 3.4, even up to, you know, 3.6 total seconds here. Now let's see the exact same situation, but instead using a queue that was designed for concurrency, right? This TDB concurrent queue. So let's go ahead and just time this one TDB example. And what we see is that, you know, unsurprisingly, it's a whole heck of a lot faster. In fact, uh, in some cases, it's over a second faster um, to do all of these operations, right? In this case, you know, 1.2 or 1.3 seconds faster, right? Um, so here by using a container that was, you know, built from the ground up to support concurrency, um, we can get a lot better performance. Now, of course, you know, this isn't to say that, you know, you're going to get a speed up of say 50% by just switching to something like a concurrent queue. Most, you know, applications aren't just pushing, you know, a thousand or a million items into a queue in a very tight loop. But this is to say that there are performance benefits to be had by designing things like concurrent queues instead of just using uh, the more heavy handed lock approach. Okay, so that's going to go ahead, go ahead and do it for this video here. It's just a brief introduction to this idea of having concurrent containers um, and why we might want to look at this further. In the upcoming videos, we'll see how we can implement some of these containers and these operations ourselves and start to try to understand the difference between things like lock free and wait free and what these things mean. But like I said, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.